Hello, John. Hello, Andrew. So, yesterday, while I was out and about in Dublin City, I came across some drones that were about to take off, and they had some food being sh pushed into them. <laughs> okay, burgers and stuff like that going across the sky. Burgers in the sky, John Malone. Anyway, um, so what we're going to talk about today is there's 7,500 drones now in Ireland, and there's been trials in various parts of the country, Offaly and Balbriggan, and obviously now we're, we've a full capacity here um, in Dublin 15, and what do you think of the whole idea of flying food across the sky? Yeah, well, uh, the, 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 what, what height did it go in the sky? I would say probably a thousand feet, maybe maybe between 500 to a thousand feet. Well, it's kind of high, isn't it? And uh, it seems a very peculiar way to do things uh, for a hamburger. Uh, because uh, people do that, uh, usually uh, people from other jurisdictions, uh, from, you know, if, if people that come to the country and they, they have baskets and bicycles and sometimes they have a little scooter or something and off to go with, with the parcels, which which uh, is the way then to go to whatever houses. Uh, now, the one in Palmerstown, the McDonald's in Palmerstown, uh, must be doing such business that they're, I don't know how they're able to have enough stock to do all that uh, that goes into that place. It's one of the must be the busiest uh, McDonald's in the country, uh, in in the in the shopping centre there. In the, uh, so um, now, but it's a very peculiar way. I can't see the the point of it. Uh, why would they want to deliver hamburgers in one of these drones? Yeah, look, what, the thing. What is, uh, upstairs and up here where the brain is well what's the idea because then how did the drone know where to go oh well there's no look the thing about it is wherever john malone is with his phone google knows where you are so the, the technology is very much there to identify exactly where it has to go it's, it's very similar to a sat satellite navigation system in the car OK, you type in the address and they, it brings you there. It's as simple as that, really, you know. And so the person will have an app on their phone and then they'll be told, yeah, look, you're, you're, this is the location now of your burger in the sky. It's coming, toward, it's coming towards you. It's now over your house. A red light goes off or whatever and tells you, yeah, go out, collect it. And then it drops it down probably with, with a cord or whatever, or it lands, whatever. But the thing about it is, I... Do you, do you, do you, do you go out then and, and pick, pick what you ordered out? Is yes, that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. Uh, uh, is, huh? Yeah, so you go out then. You go out of your apartment or house uh, because most of these, uh, I can't figure it out what, why they would 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 uh, do do this uh, and a drone coming with the, with the hamburgers. So do they go out and then are they able to open the door of the drone? I presume there's something that they can get um, possession of the hamburgers. Well, this is the thing. I mean, but that was always the case with deliveries, anyway. I mean, if you deliver the pizza in the car, I did deliveries when I was a student, and you drive right, up to a that's, place. That's, that's straightforward. But I'm thinking at the drone. I mean, the the the, the, the must have a um, a compartment in this drone from from the McDonald's. I would imagine. So I would imagine eh? that that you press something. On the phone, the app, and then it opens the door for the food. I would imagine if it if it lands, no. if it yeah. lands, I would imagine that you have to stand within proximity proximity of the drone. Then you press something on your phone, and then that releases a cord to drop down your package, or else the, the drone lands, and then you press the thing on your phone, which identifies you as the pay as the payee pay, pay, payer, and then the door opens because you're identified as the person who paid for it. I would imagine that's the uh, way. No, right. Well, you see, this is it now. Do these drones make a noise? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there, there was quite a... F well, then that means people people might be having a snooze and suddenly they think something is going to land and crash into their house if it's making a noise. Uh, because that's the last thing you want uh, when you're in your house to hear some kind of a noise actually over your roof. Uh, that, that, the... that, that, that has to be considered... And uh, disallowed, shall we say? I think they'd want to. Um, they'd want to stop that kind of cardiology. Uh, I know 
young people have sort of private little drones that they just put up and go for a few yards or something and they can bring it back a kind of like a toy or something. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think there's something like that uh, with, with, with these ones uh, that have these kind of small things that, 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 just, that they can put up and bring back whatever way they do it. Uh, that's probably mm, simple enough. Uh, but the idea of uh, um, goods coming by drone to people's houses and making a noise disturbing other people. Uh, I think uh, there's a thing called environment and they're yapping about noise uh, because uh, noise is not so so pleasant, especially if it's up in the sky over your house. As it's passing over and making this noise, you think, goodness, what's that? You might look out and say, what's that going to be York doing? Well, I'll give you an or, example. Uh, what was I'll... that? Carrying bombs or something. I'll Drones, give you uh, carry bombs in, in in other jurisdictions. Hello. Um so I'll give you an example, okay, of how many drones could actually you could actually have in an area like say Dublin fifteen, okay? Dublin fifteen has a population of hundred and ten thousand people. If you just pick one Domino's if you if you pick one Domino's pizza place, okay, Domino's will have about seven drivers. Now, if you replace those seven drivers with seven drones, that's just one shop. Now, multiply that by a couple of hundred restaurants in the area, okay? And before you know it, within five years, you could have a swarm of drones all over the sky when you look out your window. And that's this is what I don't like. And I think what it should be is that it should be a, lux- a, a kind of a luxury more than a necessity. And that if somebody wants their, their food delivered quickly uh, through a drone, that they should pay an extortionate price. I think what it should be used for is emergency medicine from pharmacies, for hospitals, for doctors and all that, to fly things through the sky. And that's a good idea, okay? Anything that's an emergency yeah. is good. But to, to actually use drones to move trivial items like food, when we already have enough, um, do you know in Dublin you have lots of uh, delivery drivers, but they're not drivers, they're actually they're on electric bicycles. I think that's that's, that's, fun, right. that's that that meets the needs, you know. And there's no need for these these food drones, which will just cause pollution. But also, there's the element of, you know, when 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 you start putting a couple of hundred drones into the sky, it will affect wildlife and birds. Well, it's it's it's, 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 it's frightening the life out of ordinary people that wonder what's going on with this permanent noise of drones. Uh, first of all, it should be prohibited. <laughs> Uh, and people, people are more important than drones. And if it's a a, a, a more in the business of doing without people, it's a kind of the sort of people that carry out those type of things. Uh, they want their head examined. It should be just finished. And don't forget, as we're talking about drones, I was just thinking about robots. Mm-hmm. Have you seen any robots lately? No, I seen a robot a couple of years ago um, at an exhibition I was at. Yeah, was it in a was it in a, a premises of the like where there might have been walkers? And because I know they have these um, things that we're talking about robots, and um, and 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 are t- replacing walkers in some places. So the people that run these companies, I think they want to be running with the country all together and hop on a slow boat to China because. People are more important than robots. They are, but I suppose, look, what you have there in, um, for example, in Amazon, um, the whole warehouse is automated. It's full of robots, you know, for deliveries, for delivering packages. And uh, there's only a few humans in them, you know, and robots are placing you know, a big burden on the actual um, people losing their jobs. You know, it's, it's, um, that's why I've sent you before. You I was saying to you before that robots should have to pay PAYE, the universal social social charge, or they should have an RSI number because they are taking the job of somebody else. Okay, and therefore they should have to pay their contributions and their pension the whole lot as a robot. <laughs> do you know what? Do you know what come? Do you know how that? Um... What would they call it? Um, evil come into into play. Do you, do you know the background to it? No. I'll give you a, what the background is to it. Uh, when 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 I worked in bigger places where there was what they call a personnel department. Yes. 
So if you had a problem, you spoke to somebody in the personnel department. But that has changed into, guess what? Human resources. Yeah. And that's that that business of describing people and employees as resources should have been never allowed to happen. Yeah. Our personnel department is there to interview people and hire people and look after their interests. Human resources has a different agenda. And I think this is where you get these, uh, the like of Amazon. I wouldn't buy, if they were giving me something for nothing, I wouldn't take it. Uh, why would you do any business with a, with a crowd that has robots instead of human beings? Because I wonder, will they be d delivering to robots? Will robots be able to order from Amazon? <laughs> whatever well, well, what robots want. I, I'm, just, I'm just carrying this. You <laughs> have to sort of have satire for the look of that. Yes. And I wonder is the man that owns owns uh, Amazon, is he a robot? Perhaps he has a robot at home wherever he lives to do, we say, clean the dishes or something. Mm -hmm. And maybe answer the door. Press a button. Do you see where it's going? I know what you uh, mean. Yeah. It's a quite crazy. And um, the robots uh, should not be used to my way of thinking. And it all comes from this business of personnel being changed to human resources. Mm -hmm. Like the same as your machine or something. A robot can replace you and you'll sort of, you will get the door. But the robot won't get the door. So he, he should be paying tax and insurance. That's what I'm saying. He should, he should be paying tax. He should be paying insurance, pay universal social charge, and they should have a, a pension contribution from for his old age. And, and they should be fairly high as so as they can look after all those ones uh, that are entitled to unemployment uh, remuneration of a, a sufficient standard that they can actually uh, have a, a, be able to get some food so mm -hmm. as they can survive and uh, be able to buy shoes so as they're not going around in their bare feet, as our brothers and sisters, I remember seeing them going around in their bare feet. They didn't have the money to buy a pair of shoes, maybe except for Sunday, to go to Mass. Mm -hmm. I so think, he, like, if you point, go back to... Uh, the... He went to school in our bare feet, and yeah. they put on their shoes when they went to the school. Yeah. The thing about it is, um, yeah, I remember, I actually remember living in County Kerry, and it was... um. The local children, farmers' children, they always walk walked around in their bare feet. That's right. Well, this is probably come from a farm, and it's a really substantial farm. So uh, she had a sister that was bossy. <coughs> you always get one of them in families, and uh, made them walk in their bare feet, and then put on their big shoes when they went into school. And the same party is still knocking about, and that's that same old ideology of a way of. I going can on tell you. Now. John, that I I walked at the age of what age was I? Let me see, twenty two, I think. I walked into the city centre from the North Circle Road in Dublin, where I was staying at the time, um, and I walked in my bare feet to see how people would react, and I walked all the ways to Saint Stephen's Green in bare feet. Okay, but what happened? And what happened was people were looking at me as if I had six heads. They really were, okay? And then when I got into town, it wasn't too bad until I got into town, into the city centre, and I started, like, standing at the junction of the traffic lights, okay? And then people were behind me. I was I was hearing whispers. He's not wearing any shoes. He's not wearing any shoes. Look, look, okay? And then... You, you learned something there. The people in need... I think the people in need telethon or something was on and they had these Wellingtons collecting money. You throw the money into the Wellington, you see? And uh, they said to me, they came up to me and they said, listen, maybe we should be giving you the Wellingtons <laughs> because you have no shoes, okay? And I was there, yeah, I'm actually doing an experiment. I said, I, I wanted to find out, okay, what it's like to walk barefoot around the city and the reaction I'd get and was it good for my feet, okay? And uh, it was just an experiment that I did bizarre experiment and uh the reaction was was it was i suppose look it was the equivalent to if you go back a hundred years ago to the time of the famine i'm sure there's lots of people going around um dublin city with no shoes you know that's right and uh now uh when you were young going to school in listole 
did you walk with shoes or did you did you have your bare feet? Well, we 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 walked with our shoes always, but there was a family of well, farmers. Yeah, you were one of the lucky ones because there was other ones uh, in the country. Because I remember seeing them, uh, and even when I was well, this I'm going kind of a, a good age. I've had a good innings, and uh, in their bare feet. Now I don't think I was ever in my bare feet uh, except when I was getting into bed, and then I would be in my bare feet. I didn't wear my shoes in that. Mm -hmm. Although, mind you, it was very cold in the winter. There was no centred heating. You had, a, you had a, 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 hot, a hot water bottle that was made in China. And you were putting that around to try and heat here, there and yonder. And so as you wouldn't be like this when you get into bed with freezing. And the same way in many places, there was no boy. And you had to wash your hands in cold water. Mm -hmm. you, only, you had to boil a kettle if you wanted a bit of hot. You couldn't be, be doing that all the time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because uh, the hot water, but the, the kettle was on the range. It wasn't plugged in anywhere. It's on the range. Uh, so that's, it had to heat up and it was used for tea and stuff like that. Uh, not for washing yourself. You might get a clip in the ear for that kind of carry on if you were using the tipped in and got the hot water, take some frizz and put some in. And where are you, where are you going with hot water? Be, yeah, I think that um, I think like uh, if you go back to uh, Persian times, I mean that was the first use of drones, and but the drones were pigeons. You know, the pigeon was a carrier; he used to carry messages. You know, it's yeah, not pi it's, pigeons. Well, they weren't they weren't carrying food, were they? <laughs> Did they get some teeth on their way? Maybe flies or whatever. Well, they, funny pigeons, enough, because... birds do carry food themselves. I mean, if you look at eagles, they'll carry they'll carry a dog across the sky. <laughs> So, I mean, oh, I the I idea of food yeah, going across the sky, that. it's happened, happened thousands of years ago already, you know. But when anyway, I was, young, I was I was like birds and eagles. I often used to say, I see an eagle. Well, now I didn't know that they were actually, um, what would I call it, something like the lion hunting other birds. They weren't sort of doing what other birds do. They're picking off the ground and trying to get something nourishment that way. But an eagle tries to attack other um, birds. And uh, animals and that, and maybe they have a purpose, but I wouldn't like to see them in this country. And some people are, uh, you know, the lights over up here that have money and nothing between their brains, you know, uh, they're, they're trying to get eagles into their land and they can interfere with sheep. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? They can. Uh, so we're talking about drones. So um, John Malone, a Christian TV artist, is against that business of drones. I don't want to hear drones over the house. Uh, delivering food to some some individual. Uh, if they, uh, can they not go to the shop and buy whatever they want if they, if they want food? What do they want uh, drones bringing food to them? Is there something wrong with them? There is something wrong Perhaps nuts. They're nuts. And I'm just only saying that not for the drones. And if the hospitals have to use a drone and uh, kind of against drones full stop for anyone to use, I mean... It should be able to get to a, a, an emergency situation in jig time. Don't forget this debilitators or whatever they call them ones, that if somebody has a, a stroke or a heart attack, they can be saved because it's something that can be saved. It's it's uh, these the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, the pillarators and to have them in uh, ambulances if they have to go to a scene. And uh, to try and resurrect, uh, to, to try and re re revive a person, you know. So, like, there's a lot of useful things knocking about, uh, but I don't believe in drones do nothing. Thank you very because much, John. They're going to interfere with somebody. Very yeah? good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye now. Uh,